Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the breakout session on reforming the standards of animal welfare for wildlife, in particular captive elephants. I am truly honored to welcome Mrs. Suparna Ganguly, who is the co-founder and trustee of the two organizations known as CUPA and WRRC. Ma'am's opinions and insights on captive elephants in India are based on extensive research, documentation, and inspection on captive elephants in private holdings. Her findings and opinions are widely published in the book, Gods in Chains, which subsequently inspired of the making the documentary, Gods in Shackles. She was also honored for her contribution in animal welfare with Nari Shakti Award 2015 by the Honorable President of India. Today, Suparna Ma'am will shed light on the current situation of captive elephants in the country and the legal framework surrounding the issues of trade and transfer, and also the gaps in implementation of Wildlife Protection Act 1972. Now, without taking much time, I am handing over to Suparna Ma'am to share her views on this important subject. Thank you. Thank you, Dinesh Ji, for your very warm presentation of my work. And I would sincerely like to thank FIAPO for giving me this opportunity to um, uh, talk about my views on captive elephant uh, welfare and issues in the country. I would be very happy if we had a wonderful engagement with the audience so i will keep my talk short and also the um, photo essay at the end of the talk i hope will excite people's curiosity to ask questions at the end of the session so thank you again and so we'll begin but um, so elephants in captivity in india has always been shrouded in mystery. Their origins and their sources of acquisition are mostly unknown. Though it has been almost three decades since they were removed from the cattle class category to schedule one wildlife, they still undergo much abuse and torture and live very sad and sordid lives. In, it was in 2002 that safety clauses were first inserted as the only initial amendment to the Wildlife Protection Act for captive elephants. Sadly, these are rather ambiguous and they are woefully inadequate. 20 years later, they, we see they have done very little to protect the lives and welfare of elephants in captivity. So I think all of us know that elephants are not cattle and they are wild animals with a very high level of cognition and live long lives like humans. They also have a unique biological, social, physical and psychological needs. Their brain size is one of the largest in the animal kingdom and it is approximately three times larger with more neurons than a human brain. And it is obvious to anyone when they view this photo essay that it is almost impossible in captivity to give elephants the richness of its life in the forest. Elephants also do not breed well in captivity, except in forest camp environments. And it has not been possible to breed them from one generation to the next, like cows, horses, or dogs. So we need to see what kind of laws do we have here that gives some amount of protection. And you'll find that the laws are really weak compared to the protection that these animals need. These laws actually have been in existence from Chandragupta Maurya's reign in the third century BC. The Indian Forest Act and 1878 and the Elephant Preservation Act of 1879 under the British Raj were all meant to regulate, capture, trade, or kill, hunt elephants in the provinces. Nin 94 years later, in 1972, when the Wildlife Protection Act came into existence, 
strangely elephants were still viewed as cattle till an amendment in 1991 removed them from the cattle category and livestock thereafter after 11 years in 2002 an amendment to the wildlife protection act gave the elephants some much needed guards though woefully inadequate these still stand in force though it is fraught with ambiguity and much confusion so some of the central laws that protect the elephant is mainly and primarily the wildlife protection act which was made in 1972 and amended in 2002 in that act some of the sections that were important for elephants which we can always uh, go back when we, a case is being framed or a complaint is being done is that all wildlife section 39 of the wildlife protection act section 39 all wildlife including elephants are government property section 40 the owner should declare the wild animal in his or her possession to the chief wildlife warden section 41 chief wildlife warden should inspect the owner's premises and document the observations whether he is capable the owner of keeping an elephant or not 42 section issue of ownership certificate only if adequate facility for housing maintenance and upkeep of the animal is available section 43 selling of wildlife including elephants for any commercial value is illegal even gifting is illegal as per notice from the ministry of environment and forests section 49 purchasing of wildlife including elephant for commercial value is illegal section 50 that gives powers to officers forest department and police to seize wild animals kept illegally but sadly in these few sections of the wildlife protection act many are not followed and rarely does the chief wildlife warden go to inspect and holding or to give it in writing whether a particular uh, custodian or an owner can keep an elephant in those premises or has adequate funding for maintenance and upkeep selling also has become a joke because everywhere they are being traded under gift lease power of attorney so again that has gone under the radar and only when it is very imperative that it needs to be brought to the uh, attention of the authorities usually elephants are um, uh, scuttled from one state to an another under gifting purchasing is widely happens and happens in many many traditional arenas where i will come to later forest department and police though have been uh, when alerted and when adequate documents have been produced of Ill illegality have actually confiscated elephants and handed them over to the top forest department the second uh, framework of law that can be used for elephants is the prevention of cruelty to animals act in 1960 which section 11 it describes various forms of animal cruelties in which many of them are um, can be um, positioned on an elephant that that is being abused and the section 3 is duties of the persons having charge of the animals that it should be the duty of every person having care or charge of any animal to take all reasonable measures to ensure the well-being and to prevent the infliction of, of such animals of unnecessary pain or suffering so this is from the pca act combined with the wildlife protection act and now we come to the indian penal code ipc 429 killing or maiming an animal is punishable by up to 5 years imprisonment and ipc 511 attempt to do a crime is also punishable with 50% punishment read with the relevant primary ipc other law sections because these two laws can work in conjunction with the pca and combined with the wildlife protection act thereby giving strength and support to each section because very often we have elephants who have been violently abused 
And so it may come under IPC 429 when maiming an animal or kill, it doesn't go up to killing, but maiming or brutally abusing can fall under this section. Apart from that, of course, overall arching other constitutional laws, which is Article 51A, G in the Constitution of India, fundamental duties to protect improved natural environment, forests, lakes, rivers, and wildlife, and to have compassion for living creatures. Then Article 48A in the Constitution, protection and improvement of safeguarding forests and wildlife, that the state shall endeavor to protect and improve the environment and wildlife of the country. Then Article 21 in the Constitution of India, protection of life and personal liberty, that no person shall be deprived of his life or personal liberty, except according to procedures established by the law. This was brought into focus by the Supreme Court Jalikattu Ban Judgment of 2014. And it can be used as a section where, uh, to pro when, when a case is being brought up against an elephant for abuse or cruelty. Then the Ministry of Environment and Forests also issued guidelines for the care and management of captive elephants in 2008, which was an important guideline and is regarded with a lot of attention by the state departments. And it pertains to housing, keeping, transportation, working of an elephant. And in another important letter that was issued by the Project Elephant, which it submitted to the Supreme Court in the 2014 case again of captive elephants, that gifting of elephant is prohibited as it destroys the core principle of Section 43 of WPA, where Section 43 of WPA states that no animals can be commercially traded gifting becomes a euphemism for buying and selling. So most people have taken um, cover under the section of power of attorney, lease and gifting, trying to circumvent section 43 of the Wildlife Protection Act. So today our current situation in India reveals that there may be 2,675 elephants in captivity in India as stated by the Project Elephant Division of the MOEF and CC. Since little was known about the lives, origins, and uses of captive elephants in India before 2005, you must remember that it was only three years before, in 2002, that amendments had been made to give some degree of protection. And before that, it was almost treated like cattle from 1991 to 2002. Elephants didn't have any protection. In 2002, they got some minimal protection. And in 2005, we found that nobody knew anything about the laws um, prevailing, about what sections can be used to protect if they were found in distress. And we actually were witness to a very brutal young bull elephant training in a temple. And we were shocked to know that nobody had an idea of what was allowed, what was legal, what was illegal, and whether the thing, the drama that was happening in front of us of an untrained mahout beating up an elephant in the most horrific manner, whether it was justified, should the elephant be seized? Even, even at that point, the department officials were unsure how to proceed. We decided that if any difference had to be made to this scenario, research was needed. There was no way one could get into this without knowing much more. So CUPA and WRRC went into an intense research project that lasted practically from 2005, 6 to 2012, 13, and is almost ongoing, I would say. And it resulted, this study resulted in 56 reports and a book preceding that called Gods in Chains, published in 2011. In fact, the book created so much of um, interest and it sold out, which was most surprising for us. But, but then we understood that the lack of information about captive elephants in general made the animal activists and the general public hungry for information. After that, when we went into this whole process of research, it was pretty exhausting and it was took very long. 
we went through 12 states of India and we collected individual data on each individual elephant, which numbered from almost 1,200 individual elephants and their mahouts and their caregivers and the owners sometimes. And these data, when it was finally brought into uh, the, the um, into analysis and when it was uh, compared and it was uh, uh, put into order it threw up some terribly distressing truths we found that the management of all the elephants in india differed vastly depending on where they were kept and how they were used we found generally there were about seven categories of captive elephants that were identified in various management regimes. These were, number one was circus, number two was zoo, number three was logging, number four was begging, five was religious institutions, sixth was tourism, and seventh were forest camps, which were run by state forest departments. And this was a, this is a actually very distinctive category and it merits a completely separate review since it cannot be clubbed with the other private regimes. So we will not be addressing forest camps at all in here. We will only be looking at the first six categories, which were all under private ownership. In spite of being schedule one, elephants in all the six classes were either purchased or openly traded, gifted, leased, and used in various ways to generate income. And therefore, they often intersect social, religious, and economic interests of the users and often their abusers. The end result is very grim. Acquisition of these elephants is underlined by the need to profit. And the elephant becomes a currency for justification to continue the business of livelihood be it entertainment, exhibition, or tourism. And in the law, there are no built-in safeguards for their welfare or life. Because the Wildlife Protection Act sometimes is, can be a little ambiguous. So very often, the law, um, using the law to uh, come to some kind of a protection, offer shelter, or uh, seize them, they, have, they are actually confused by the differing kind of interpretations that the Wildlife Protection Act has. Because once when an elephant cannot be bought, but on the paper it's a gift deed, and it is very obvious to everyone that it is a sale, but there is evidence that there it is only a gift. So the even the forest department sometimes is helpless to take action against, though, though it is quite obvious. There is no straight and simple legal um, instructions that any uh, authority can follow. So I felt that it was important for people to know a little bit of background on context before we come on to the photo essay, because the photo essay has some disturbing pictures, views of elephants in various kinds of situations and maybe these this information and the photos may encourage people to ask many questions and once the questions are asked it is much easy to explain one to one how how it all functions how the whole trade and the whole uh, use of captive elephants in india happen and how often uh, the laws have failed to protect them from misuse or abuse I'll give a very short explanation uh, of each photo and it's the interpretation of those photos they've been taken over a long period of time and sadly nothing much has changed in the last seven years so they continue as they are as these photos show many of them are from 2014 15 16 17 and on to 21 i suppose with not much change in their in their um, position or in their suffering is a shot from the famous Trishur Puram in Kerala. This Puram uh, is the end of 
the entire Puram season, which starts from November to April of every year. And here, elephants are used for all small temple festivals are called Purams. It culminates in the Trishur Puram, which happens around April 14th, 24th, 27th, depending on the date. And it, at this time, it is peak summer in India and in Kerala, temperatures reach 42, 43, and it is burning hot. And throughout January to April, the elephants are paraded on this. You can see where they are standing on hot concrete on which you cannot put your bare foot down. And all of them have their hind limbs very badly wounded due to tight chaining. Before, I mean, they are tied 24 hours a day. And during Puram, they are tied even more uh, fiercely, I would say, both fore limbs, both hind limbs, cross chain, because they are so distressed that they could run amok. So uh, when you see them, you will realize that they, they are really in a bad way here. This is again in Kerala, where an elephant is being tied to a tree, uh, um, probably in between two festival functions. You see the black mark, those are the sores and wounds of the chain, which they try to conceal with some black paste so that people cannot understand or cannot uh, protest against the wounds on their legs. This is due to beating, ankush wounds, spearing, so that those elephants are brought under control because they are huge tuskers weighing six, seven tons, and they can cause a great deal of harm if, if they go berserk, which they often do due to the uh, terrible conditions of the situation which they are in. Next. These elephants are tied very close to trees or with a close uh, tied uh, around the tree in such a manner that they cannot move. So this is back legs and front legs both are tied. And this elephant has been secured after he ran amok and was captured by the team, by the um, uh, function, uh, the committees, the temple committees after which he was secured so that he could not create more harm or hurt or kill anybody. Next. This is a case of an accident that had happened on the road, again in Kerala, again during the Puram season, when it was lifted and it was put onto a truck, probably it was a fatal accident. And I think this elephant died and could not be saved. These accidents are very common in Kerala and used to happen with regularity in the last three, four years. Next. This is the precarious transport, which very often small festivals, when they um, hire the elephants to come to their villages, these elephants are loaded onto trucks like these which are unsafe, unsteady, completely uh, dangerous for such a large animal. You can see how, dis how much discomfort he's standing in. But, and this stool that is below the truck is where the elephant puts his feet because elephants cannot jump. And God forbid, if this stool breaks, the elephant will break his thigh or his forelimb or his hind limb. And that would be the beginning of the end for the animal. So. This is the kind of transport that is normally used. As expected, these transports have their own fatal consequences. And this is of an elephant that was imbalanced and fell down. And, and it was a fatal accident. This is another shot of the same incident. Yeah, you can scroll up. You can scroll up. It is so obvious that the all the management around the elephant was very, very badly managed, taken. And you have a beautiful tusker uh, who must have been in his prime of life to have lost his life in this kind of a incident that should never have happened, should never have been permitted by law to happen. 
next this is a shot of uh, uh, of uh, guru vayur uh, temple where when i had gone to inspect in 2011 12 there were 56 elephants but now they have come down to 42 or 41 they are all tied together in a small courtyard and elephants who never these tuskers male young in their and in their prime reproductive stage have been torn away from the forest their genetic diversity lost to be kept here uh, tied day and night for use in purams and other festivals in the state and they never these these tuskers never are close to each other in the wild they always keep wide distances so the amount of stress they go through by standing next to each other is impossible to see and this is one of the reasons that they are permanently under stress and develop lots of diseases that are a chronic in nature next this is a young elephant possibly donated uh, to the institution by some well meaning donors but his whole life will be in chains like this tied back foot and front foot for all his life and this is what he will have to see the next 40 years if he's lucky he may get to not exist if he lives he will go through a lifetime of torture next this elephant was a very famous case uh, from a place called kannur in kerala and in spite of the horrible wounds that he had which which you can see on the right side he was paraded in april 2016 and obviously i don't I think he lived very long he died immediately after this is the same where many activists complained to the government and to the committee uh, trying to get relief for this elephant from Kannur. But I think uh, the lobby of the elephant owners was very strong and they succeeded in parading him in spite of these uh, horrific wounds. And these are all caused by spears. This is an elephant that has run amok, not being able to withstand the torture and the stress and the heat. And he is overturning a truck and it this is a very common occurrence during the season next um, mahouts losing their lives in the temp in the festival season and through the year is a devastating part of this whole elephant issue in kerala at least four to five humans um, mahouts handlers lose their lives and there are even deaths with the bystanders or just spectators. The elephants have a lot of hatred for their mahout because they look upon them as people who are always there to hit them or beat them or torture them. So when they get a chance, they go all out. And here you can see, and I hope this man escaped, but this elephant ran violently amok, trying to spear the mahout with his tusks. next here well, this elephant has gotten loosened from his chains and he and they can run very fast and he, here the mahouts are running for their lives and if he gets to them there's no way that these lives will be saved they will be fully destroyed because the the rage of an elephant is unparalleled and especially if they are he most of the temple season also sees must happening in these male elephants and then they are very difficult to control but yet they are still paraded because a lot of money is in the picture next this is one more where a single man is trying to control such a mammoth of an animal and it was also in the festival grounds where this elephant broke his hind leg chains and just went all out for the mahout and finally he was secured 
but it was at an enormous unnecessary risk to human life. Next. next. This is another classical picture of a Puram elephant in full um, decorations uh, running amok and attacking these bystanders, people, whoever he can get, he would smash them to death. And these two people on top, if they escape, they would be very lucky. Usually at this point, the temple committees come and they shoot uh, those um, tranquilizer guns in order to immobilize the elephant which has its own negative effects on an elephant's health. But this is the only way they can control this animal when it has broken the level and limit of its patience. Next. These are the classical wounds and sores which these elephants have. Their feet are permanently deformed and they are always in chains. They never get a minute off chains. They are never left for grazing or foraging, and they get most horrible chronic wounds. Then these wounds with rusted chains also give rise to septicemia in their body. Next. This was an elephant that was very widely written about. It was an elephant called Nilakandan, for which even uh, appeals went to the chief minister of Kerala to just give him rest and not to utilize him for festivals. But he had been kept in the worst possible conditions and he had become almost handicapped uh, due to human um, interference and human treatments and all kinds of things that were thoroughly uh, unethical that was done to him. And he was paraded till the last till he could, so that as much money as could be made out of him was done. And after that, the poor thing had a very painful death. Next. These are wounds that are typically caused by spears, by ankush, by long um, uh, weapon that they use because the feet are very delicate part of an elephant's anatomy. So when an elephant is getting restless and needs to be um, uh, made uh, fearful, then they will stab that spear on the lower part of his foot. Next. Now here, uh, it is so sad because in the wild, elephants are very scared of fire. And in the human elephant conflict, villagers are taught to use torches, lights, lamps to scare away wild elephants from their fields. But it is so unscientific that here in functions and festivals, the same fire is used in front of the elephants, knowing full well that this may give rise to terrible psychological uh, breakdowns where he, it, the elephant may just attack the priest next to him or the next human which is uh, available because he cannot take this kind of pressure of having things he's scared of, like loud noise, crackers, fires next to him. The same uh, items are used to drive away wild elephants. So this is one of the most unscientific way of managing wildlife, especially when science has already revealed all the things that should not be done with wild elephants and, and not to lose control over them. But the same mistakes are being made on and on, over and over, and even to, to date, even in this festival season of 2022. Next. Yeah, these are all elephants that are brought in for a ceremonial feeding session of two or three balls of rice, but they have to undergo the same stress of standing next to each other, mature bull elephants, which they never do in the wild. And most of them are wounded, maggot infested, abscesses, pus, everything coming out in this particular picture when they were brought in for this ceremonial feeding session. Next. This is a race that is performed at the opening of the festival season where elephants are made to run uh, each other as a form of entertainment, form of sports. 
but they are put through untold stress with a uh, lot of people running around them, crowds cheering, and they are trying to race each other. Next. This is logging, which is classically uh, was done by elephants before the 2006 ban came from the Supreme Court to ban logging in Assam. And that is when many elephants became homeless and were sent or were bought from South India. And this temple festival culture erupted because a lot of elephants they could get because those elephants could not log anymore in Assam after the ban on uh, uh, of the Supreme Court. And it is a very hard life for an elephant, extremely hard. They are made to uh, sometimes pull and draw logs bigger than and heavier than them. And uh, this is one more oh, um, category where elephants are still used in, in uh, Assam, in South and in uh, plantations. This is again in the Puram where you see the heat outside is unbearable, probably 43 Celsius degrees. And even the mahouts are exhausted waiting for the festival to begin. And the elephants are exposed to burning, absolutely bright mid afternoon sun. And the mahouts, they're kind enough to give, allow the mahouts to sit under their shade, whereas they are left exposed to the sun on their backs, which is absolutely uh, uh, torturous for an elephant because it cannot regulate its temperature. Its thermal regulatory mechanism is very poor. It should never be exposed to heat. In the wild, elephants are active in the evening and nights. In the daytime, they rest. But here, it is just the opposite. So therefore, this unscientific management gives rise to more and more tragedies. Next. This is exactly what an elephant hates. He hates being surrounded by crowds, a noise, unknown people touching, pulling his tail hair. And he, this elephant has the patience of a god that he has not gone crazy and run amok. But it is to show to what extent uh, the environment can impact on the elephant uh, in a negative way and leave them with no protection against this kind of a uh, chaotic, mad um, stampeding kind of behavior they're not they they are just not used to it they are a wild animal which people tend to forget next this elephant was paraded in spite of his painful foot condition for many years and was still handled in an extremely rough manner by the owners and for all that during festivals they would generally cover him with a lot of ceremonial cloth so his wounds and his afflictions are never known to the common public so people just look at it as a very ceremonial animal walking through but when they lift that cloth they see all the signs of huge torture and uh, uh, pain in that animal This was a famous elephant who was paraded year after year in spite of having his trunk fully paralyzed. And he could not drink water on his own. With great trouble, he could drink. He has been talked about, but it is a very shameful thing that he, he was old, he was paralyzed, and still the lure of money uh, would not... Uh, have the, any compassion shown to him that even the authorities seem to be helpless to take any action and to give him some respite. His private ownership, of course, they couldn't care because they only wanted the higher money that he would fetch at any festival, just being there. But the fact that he has been filmed and he had been recorded is a lot of shame to humanity at large. Next. These are elephants paraded, exhibited, and up for sale at Sonpur Mela. Sonpur Mela was the hub where traders from Kerala, from all over India, would meet 
with brokers and with elephant sellers who would make their contacts with Arunachal and Assam and Bihar. And Bihar would be the place where these elephants would be brought after quick training and then sold to likely candidates all over India. It could be institutions, it could be circuses, it could be zoos. It is. It was one of the most notorious place where uh, wild animals like birds, parakeets, um, uh, lots of mongooses, anything that you would wish for, e elephants, of course, and cattle, horses, everything traded. It was a grand cattle fair in which elephants there were the biggest wildlife that was paraded for uh, public consumption and sale. It was thankfully stopped in 2019, but we don't know for how long. This is again the kind of um, uh, chains that are used on elephants so that if they become restless, the chains are pulled very tight so that they bear into the skin and can give rise to chronic wounds over a period of time. But this is the kind of cycle chain that is very common in uh, uh, trying to restrain elephants. Next. This is uh, Amir foot, where again, a whole lot of um, abuses have been done on the elephants, handicapped elephants with back leg dysfunctional have been made to carry tourists all the way up the slope onto the Amir fort. They have been subject of a movie called Where the Elephant Sleeps by a Swiss filmmaker, which was beautifully portrayed, but was the cause of a lot of anger in Rajasthan. And she became targeted by the entire community there because she portrayed the reality of the elephant tourism in Jaipur. Next. Elephants which are sick often cannot eat. And what they get in Rajasthan is really sad. They don't get green fodder, they get hay, they get dry straw, and they get excessive sugar cane. And when they fall sick and they can't eat, this is the shot of a person beating an elephant to force it to eat because he knows that if the elephant weakens, it may die, and then he will have to go out and get a new elephant, which is expensive. So he will try and see that she eats something but the food that is there, the environment, the habitat is 360 degrees wrong, completely in opposition to what an elephant needs and where it lives in its natural forest. Next. Um, young boys are often made to handle elephants and one of their learning processes is how to control and the entire psyche of the handlers is controlled through violence. Continuously, they will try and experiment with the ankush, with the stick, with the spear to see what gives the maximum scare and fear so that that breaking down process they have experienced many years back, it is always there to relive the trauma in them that they would be beaten or you know, jabbed if they don't listen. And Mahut start training themselves on elephants at a very young age by learning how to uh, in, in, inflict fear and torture on them. Next. This elephant had a very severe foot rot and they looked up very traditional books of the 17th or 16th century and they started cauterizing the wound by fire. Uh, they uh, felt that these traditional rest, uh, remedies were superior to the modern the doctors probably because it came down on in a, in a kind of a um, some kind of a bible that their forefathers may have left behind and they have experimented with it uh, heavily on the elephants and um, still continue to do so but thankfully today i think things are changing this was not very long back it was about in 2014 when this film was taken and this picture was shot. Then they have their remedies of chili paste, uh, of all kinds of uh, uh, therapies to put around the most delicate part of an elephant is the eye and the trunk and the feet. And these kind of things are put around without understanding 
what the consequences of such um, treatments are and this quack remedies are still a part of the uh, medical management of uh, the Rajasthan elephants. Here, this elephant has severe foot rot. So they put all kinds of medicines and pack them up in sacks and keep the feet tied up like this. So this was another way to show that how elephants in the hands of people who are there to only exploit and extract as much resources and money that can be extracted really don't care to give the elephant any treatment or anything that is that would be um, uh, uh, conducive to it. Instead, they go back and there is no one to question them. There is no authority. There is no forest department. There is no committee. There's no police. There's nothing. They can do what they wish with the animal, short of killing it. And maybe even that. This is a circus elephant that had run amok in Pune. And at that point, it was in the middle of a field where there was a lot of crowd which collected all around and they were trying to capture it. And it was a shot of that because it must have broken away from the tent where it's housed 24 hours on short chains, except for that little walk around the ring when the performance takes place. Next. Here he is showing classical symptoms of um, trauma, of uh, of uh, stress-related disorder where he's chasing his caregiver and, and if he got hold of him, he would probably smash him to death. Next. Finally, I think he, this elephant has been captured and that would mean a night of beating for him by his caregivers because they would know that the only way to instill discipline would be through force and the elephant would be very badly punished, deprived of water, food and beaten through the night. This would be the source of um, what it, it would be a source of the um, infliction of punishment as a way to um, solve the animal's mental problems. Next. Coming to Tamil, this was in Maharashtra, sorry. There was a very famous elephant called Bichli who had been seen and reported about until the last. She was the subject of a lot of abuse, a lot of misuse. And when it came to, close to her life's end, she, people seeing her couldn't even recognize she was an elephant. So she passed away in July 2013. But this is what uh, humans had made her come to. A beautiful elephant uh, should have been a part of the forest, separated from a herd, from probably the lush forests of the Northeast to the streets of Pune. Next. This elephant died in Mumbai and uh, was, it's, it's the same elephant, Bijli. She was, she was in both places. She was begging in Pune, begging in Bombay, uh, belonged to a group of a very lower economic group that could not, obviously they could not uh, look after and cater to the needs of an animal like an elephant. But surprisingly, the law gave them that uh, the, the right to own an elephant, which shows that even today, our mindset is still the same that elephant and cattle are the same. A family that can own a cow is equally capable of keeping an elephant. And so this is the physical condition when they finally die. The same elephant being lifted for taking, I mean, being lifted by the uh, crane in, on the, from the Bombay streets probably for burial. Next. Coming to Tamil Nadu, there also the, the transport is not very good. Private owners transport the elephant in rickety things to save costs on the main highways. 
on the streets surrounded by vehicular traffic like this without any protection she's probably been going from one temple to the other next this was an elephant that was kept in isolation for over 22 25 years uh, if not more in a small shed of a garage where you could only see through the window which was a tiny grill and she was in darkness all the while and she was noticed very often to be banging her head against the pillar of the uh, of 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 a shed and she was eventually rescued after a lot of uh, appeals went to the forest department and to the chief wildlife warden uh, but her time here uh, was very pathetic and one of the reasons she was kept in such uh, in a dungeon kind of a place was because she had uh, chased a devotee and therefore she could not be relied upon for balanced behavior so they were very scared that she, if taken out she may cause harm so they relegated her to this thing for a lifetime next this was an elephant that was so overweight so sick so chronically abused with the wrong foods with the wrong method of uh, no walking uh, uh, absolutely um, basic treatment uh, with no elephant vet in attendance she died a painful death in madurai in tamil nadu this was another elephant in another famous temple in the south in tamil nadu where um, she had an open abscess that was oozing pus all the time no treatment given um, dejected depressed always sagging skin uh, unable to lie down very often this was her only hope that that long corridor where she was tied was the only place where she uh, was able to walk for a very short while and all the time they were kept in this particular position uh, day after day and her tail shows minor fractures where somebody must have uh, turned it uh, to give her pain next uh, another privately owned elephant in tamil nadu with such deep foot rot uh, that uh, at one point it was thought it would be impossible to save her but after many years of treatment uh, the, the foot is very misshapen and malformed but it is still living and it has been transferred to the rescue center in tamil nadu this was an handicapped elephant who was very scared of vehicles but was made to mount a truck to go to the rejuvenation camp once a year and she fell down from the truck and had a terrible injury where one leg of hers was completely um, bent but she survived however in the latter part the weight of her leg could not could not support the whole of her body and her, her temple where she was housed had this kind of a garbage next to it and she, she was at the mercy of her caregivers who did their best but did not have access to either knowledge of elephant keeping or medicines that would be an elephant but they would be treated most of these elephants are treated with a cocktail of antibiotics that makes them immune to most drugs during the lifetime next another privately kept elephant who was very sick owner was very poor could not afford medical treatment it was a situation where such individuals should never have been allowed to keep elephants but they have access because they are openly traded and bought so this elephant had a very painful death and would be lying like this for days on end without treatment because owner could not afford to give her treatment next this was another sad elephant who's blind and whose handicap uh, uh prompted a very untimely death and here she was had the handicap because the mahout improper uh, uh, 
erroneously or by error he led her to a spot where she fell down and and oh, and had a very big injury to her leg it was shoulder was dislocated she was blind she was depending on the mahut he could not handle the situation and she could not take the pressure of what happened next she went into pain suffering and eventually death i hope you got a general overall idea of what um positions we are looking at or where we um have to come forward as a group and see that these animals don't suffer any more uh, in the offing i i should alert all of you that there is an um, amendment being sought in the wildlife protection act uh, in the next parliamentary session where they would like to uh, put a Mm, section to section 43 that gives protection to elephants by saying there should be no buying or selling though it is done it is unofficially now they want to make it official so everyone who can or cannot who can afford or doesn't have the money doesn't have the resources but can use it as a livelihood can buy or sell an elephant and section 43 is going to destroy a uh, wild elephant population because there will be a huge uh, run to get elephants calves babies captured from the forest maybe forest departments also the next step maybe would be willing to sell their calves and the temples would be all over themselves trying to acquire such animals and keeping them in the most unsuitable conditions and elephants being so long living it's not a few years they have to endure torture they have to endure it for 70 years 65 years it is it is unimaginable to imagine how uh, how how badly our elephants would be under risk if the section 43 amendment gets to be passed so i appeal to all of you please write in to the me where it's now open for public discussion and put in your thoughts and now that you have a little background of how captive elephants are kept sold and moved around india I do look forward to all the questions that you may come up with. I would be happy to answer them, and if I don't, I will get back to you because there may be things I may not know. And we all need to take a stand now and see that Section 43 amendment doesn't come to pass because it will be the death knell of our elephants, of elephants in captivity in India. They will keep coming into captivity, and they'll be traded like cows and horses. And it is very difficult to watch. an animal which is so close to a human uh, after in decades of suffering uh, due to so many causes um, it could be isolation it could be um, uh, improper keeping unsuitable habitat uh, a complete um, bereft of its uh, natural life uh, most of the elephants have never played with mud have never played with dust have never had a normal grazing which is essential for an elephant cell because they live in very very small segments of concrete buildings and towns so i hope that i have kind of clarified and have given you an overall picture and i do look forward to seeing you again bye thank you ma'am i really appreciate that you took out your valuable time and shared your findings on unscientific practices and narrated the story of miserable conditions of captive elephants in india we hope your wise words will help the participants to think deeply about the plight of these gentle giants due to time constraint we will not be taking up the questions today we do plan to have a follow up question and answer session in february once again thank you suparna ma'am for your wonderful presentation before i leave i am requesting the participant kindly refresh your browser to watch uninterrupted uh, sessions uh, we will see you all of you back on 145 pm that is quarter to 2 uh, for the next session thank you for being with us thank you